Well, hello there. Welcome. My name is Emily Norman, and I'm so excited that you are joining us today here at Willow Crystal Lake. I'm our Connections Pastor, and we're going to get started in just a couple minutes. But before we do, I want to let you know about two things uh, before we get going. First off, number one, if you are wondering, man, how do I stay connected throughout the week? And how do I learn what's going on around our church? Get those hot off the press um, alerts and news. The best way to do that is to get signed up for our e-news. Text 94090 and we'll get you on that list. The next thing I wanna let you know is if you are wondering, can I still give online in this season? The answer is yes. Text e-give to 94090 and we will text you all the deets um, about signing up for e-giving online. Well guys, we're gonna get started, like I said, in just a few minutes. But before we do, I wanna remind you the best practices and best way to worship together online. Number one, okay, this is really important. If you've been with us for a while, you know the drill. Turn that music up, okay? We want to celebrate. We want to sing loudly. Um, we want to invite our kids to have a dance party with us. Um, we're about to worship, so crank that volume up. The next thing we want to encourage you to do and invite you to do with us is to engage and to talk to us. Uh, if you're on a phone or tablet or computer, you can actually see that there is a chat going on right now and it's live. And we want to invite you to engage in that. Say hi, introduce yourself. In fact, today, if you didn't know, is Mother's Day. And I hope you knew. In fact, if you have not got a gift for your mom, you have like mm, zero seconds to do that. So I'd get on that right now. Um, but watch the service first. Uh, but share with us in the chat what you love about your mom. For me, um, I love that my mom can literally make friends with anyone, anywhere. Literally. I can't even tell you how many friends my mom has made at the grocery store or at the nail salon or at the bank. Like that woman makes friends with everyone. Um, and they're all her best friends. It's insane. I've never met someone with so many best friends in my life. Um, but I love that about my mom. I love the way that she connects with people. And so I want to hear what do you love about your mom? Share it with us below. And we cannot wait to worship with you in just a couple minutes here. it's finally happened. You've moved out. You're on your own. Congratulations. But everyone still needs a little help sometimes. Mom, have you seen my wallet? It's in your back pocket. No, I checked there. Your other back pocket, dear. Ah, thanks, Mom. Introducing the Mom Personal Assistant, the only smart speaker device with all the wisdom, caring, and sage advice of a mother. Mom, please call Brad. Honey, I'm just not sure he's right for you. Just call him. Okay, calling Ryan. No, Mom, I said call Brad. Trust me. The Mom PA always has your best interests in mind. Wish me luck, Mom. Big interview today. Did you eat breakfast? Uh... Is that what you're wearing? Wait, what? <laughs> Did you even shower? She's there to provide a helping hand whenever you need it. Mom, set a timer for 40 minutes. Mom? The Mom personal assistant won't function until you say the magic word. Oh. 
Right. Mom, please set a timer for 40 minutes. Sure thing, hon, but it's only 30 minutes for that dish. The mom PA is always correct and basically knows everything. Mom, what setting should I use for this laundry? Mom, do you think I should color my hair? Hey, Mom, can you please order mac and cheese? You still have two boxes. What? No, we're out. Did you look? Yeah, I just looked. It's gone. Do you want me to look? Uh, no, no, it's okay. I'll go look again. Try looking with your eyes this time. Based on God's perfect design, the mom personal assistant is thoughtful, kind, encouraging, and supportive. You are beautiful. It's okay. You're gonna get through this. I am so proud of you. You can change the world. But right now, hon, you really need to change your socks because they smell like a dumpster. Ugh, mom. The mom personal assistant. Always helpful, always reliable, and always there for you. Good morning, Willow Crystal Lake. We are so glad that you have joined us here today. We're going to spend a little bit of time in praise and worship, and we hope that wherever you find yourself in your home this morning, that you would be able to sing out with all of your heart and that these words would wash over you and bless you. Would you join us as we sing together? I raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah
take this situation, God, and you would turn it for good. God, that we can sing these songs about raising a hallelujah in the middle of our storm. We can say, God, be praised because we have trust in you. That we will see a victory in healing and your provision, God. We pray for that. We pray for those who have lost things, that God, you would bring wholeness. And we pray for those who need your peace and your comfort today in their anxiety and fears. God, that you would breathe a breath of fresh air upon us wherever we're at today. We're so thankful we can look to you. We're so thankful you are with us. We're so thankful you go before us and we can trust in you. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, y'all. Happy Mother's Day. Guys, this past week, we did a little contest called Hashtag Mom Life, where on our Facebook and Instagram, we asked all moms to share with us a little bit of their craziness in this quarantine season. And did we get some responses? Oh, yes, we did. Um, And they were amazing. It was so much fun to see all the craziness, to see how life has been for you as a mom in this season, and just you know, let just be in it together because come on, let's do this together, right? Um, so much fun. And today, this morning, I drew a name uh, to pick the winner of our hashtag mom life contest. And that winner is Holly Brewer. In fact, I'm sitting right outside Holly's house right now. And we're about to deliver these gorgeous flowers uh, that our local vendor worked with us on. And so let's go surprise Holly now. Well, hey guys, I'm right outside Holly's house. Got my protective gear on, the flowers over there. Let's ring the doorbell and let's surprise her now. Okay, here she comes. Okay, she's gonna get here. Hi, Holly. Hi, oh my gosh. You have won our hashtag mom life. Thank you so much. And you won these beautiful flowers. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Yes, and this is for all our moms who are going through so much right now. And thank you for your hilarious video of your kids. They're a trip. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. This is great. Awesome. Thanks. Well, guys, we had so much fun doing our little contest on Instagram and Facebook. We want to invite you and encourage you to follow those, not just for fun, but for info, Worship Wednesdays so much more so check those out and right now uh we have a special little video to share with you from our staff so check it out what i love about my mom what do i love about my mom what i love about my mom what i love about my mom what i love about my mom mom is the way that she humbly and patiently modeled her faith the biggest thing i love about my mom is her spirit of generosity I just love how strong she is, how much of a fighter she is, and how fiercely she loves God, and how much she has shaped the woman that I am today. She's always been there for me. She encourages me to do what I want and to follow my dreams, and when things don't always go right, she's always right by my side. How she's always believed in me, been there for me, supported me, and most of all taught me about Christ. What I love about my mom is, is she 100% always wants the best for me, and because of that, I can count on her always loving me super well. Her cooking and her undeniable love for her grandchildren. How much she was devoted to and loved her family. 
What I love about my mom is the way that she listens. She doesn't rush to advice right away. She hears how you're really feeling and just gives you space to feel those feelings. How incredibly generous she is. Her compassion for others and her love for animals. I love that my mom laughs really, really, really hard at her own jokes. What I love about my mom is that all the way from when I was really little to even today, she's never been afraid to tell me when I'm wrong but she's also very quick to celebrate when I'm right. No matter how far away I go, I always know she's got my back and she's right there for me. Happy Mother's Day. 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 Well, happy Mother's Day, Willow Crystal Lake. And listen, if you're new here, my name's Dave, and we're so glad that you decided to join our online community as we celebrate the moms in our lives, but also give honor to our Creator for his goodness and grace in our lives as well. And so if you are new, just text the word Willow New to 94090. When you do that, it's just a chance for us to give you some information about our church family and also to give you a small gift to welcome you here as well. Now, if you don't know me, we've never met before, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my wife and I are high school sweethearts, born and raised in South Jersey. We had our first four kids in Akron, Ohio. We then added two more about nine and a half years ago when we moved here to Crystal Lake, Illinois. And as I, again, grew up in New Jersey, I did so with my parents my older sister, my younger brother. And listen, I'd love to jump in with the rest of our staff as they just had the opportunity to talk about what they love about their moms. I'd love to tell you about what I love about my mom. And I would love to directly tell her through a Zoom call right now with a chance for you uh, to get to meet my mom as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, happy Mother's Day, mom. Thank you, Dave. It's very good to be able to see you. Yes, good to see you. Yes. But mom, thanks for taking the time just to let me brag about you today. And uh, I've, there's so much that I've always appreciated about you. And I just think even just hearing from you and just your heart would be really encouraging to moms as well. And uh, first, I think the one thing, mom, that I've always appreciated, you know, having two other children. Um, but the fact that you've always called me your favorite has been just the... <laughs> has been a huge blessing in my life. Well, and now that secret is out, Dave. That secret's out. Well, they're not watching anyway. Lisa and Steve aren't watching anyway, but that's oh, always meant the yeah. most. Steven yeah. does watch you. Right, right. <laughs> oh, well, then we're in trouble. Um, but, Mom, I think, that's you know, one of, the, one of the things that really sticks out about um, – about you and just how you've always been a prayer warrior for the family. And I think that's something that all of us have always noticed and been so grateful for and just a fantastic way that you've shown your trust in God, but also the way in which you really developed, a, I think, an intimate relationship with God, too, and with Jesus. And so how have you developed that prayer life over the years? I mean, I know it's discipline isn't something you just fall into, but how have you really kind of... Um, had that be such a, a steadfast uh, discipline that you've had over the years? Well, it, it, um, it does develop uh, as you go along, or at least it did with me. Um, uh, I uh, accepted Jesus as my savior as a teenager, 13 years old. And uh, from that time on, um, I believed God's word as truth and and I, I my prayer life started then. Um, I would say that as I became uh, a mom, uh, I definitely um, prayed more and more. And I and I can honestly say that I pray a lot. Even just it's not just you know before I go to bed and then when I wake up in the morning, I just ask the Lord to uh, help me with my day, but I, I talk to him. He, he's, I talk to him all the time. <laughs> yeah. And again, I think, you know, our family and I'm talking not just, you know, <laughs> Jen, I and the kids, but Steven and Lisa and everyone that's extended beyond there. Just so thankful for how you're always praying for us. And even, I know you pray for our church too. And that's another thing that we're super grateful I for. Do. I think the other thing that I've noticed, Mom, about your parenting is just how good you were 
at the ministry of presence during hard times. Um, you know, not seeking just to give a quick fix, but just to be present with us in our pain or frustration. I think one story that I've shared often, and you'll remember this, is when I dropped that ball my sophomore year in high school. We lost the playoff game because of it. And as soon as I got into the car, I just started bawling and then was bawling the rest of the day in my bed. And the whole time you were just by my side with on a chair and you didn't say anything. You didn't try to fix anything. You were just present. And I know that you're not, you know, I'm not saying you're perfect in this area, but you, you've always remained consistent with a patient heart and this presence, um, this posture of presence over the years. And how have you, I guess I, the question is, I just always wondered is how have you remained so consistently patient and present with people in their frustration when you could easily just lose it? <laughs> I, I can't. I don't know. I can only say I always ask the Lord for help. Uh, I do it more and more these days. Um, and, you know, you have to give up yourself and just really, truly plan or depend on, on the Lord for whatever I need. I mean, just you saying you have to give up yourself. I mean, a passage that I, I'm always reflected of on really both you and, and dad, and specifically you, mom, Philippians 2, Paul's words here, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. And that really does, I think, for me, and I, I, again, I think it's pretty much anybody that knows you, mom, is just that's, they view you as that model. And, and obviously Paul's speaking about the ultimate model being Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross for us. And this doesn't mean that we shouldn't address our own needs, but um, you are one that's just, you're naturally always looking to serve the needs of those around you. And that really has reflected the heart of Jesus. And I, you know, I just wanted to to thank you for that and how you've really left a mark in my life and our family's life for that. Um, It was last summer. We, you know, we had that moment in the, (laughs) in the driveway and just telling you how much um, just your love and care for dad right now in the midst of his cancer, in the midst of his, um, Parkinson's and how you're just continually sacrificially loving him is a huge, huge, huge lesson to my kids, to me, to everyone around us. And it's just been such a, it's been, yeah, it's just been such a blessing to see how you minister uh, to dad on a regular basis. And so again, just so thankful for you, your constant love, your care, your challenge in my life. Um, and I just just know that we're grateful for you. Yeah. Well, Dave, thank you. It's yeah. my privilege and to be able to to do what I do. Well, Willow, thanks for allowing me to share that with you. And uh, listen, as I am so grateful for my mom's influence in my life, uh, we know that not everyone has the gift of a nurturing parent or even a parent at all. And as this is National Foster Care Month, it's a reminder of Jesus' words in Matthew 19, where he said, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them. What this shows us is that for Jesus, children are to be seen, they're to be heard, and they are to be protected. And so for the motherless and fatherless in our world, we are commissioned by God to step in and help. And so as this shelter in season has unfortunately revealed an increase in abuse towards children, we know that there will soon be a high demand for foster parents. So if you'd like to find out more about how you can take steps of opening your home to foster children, or if you're needing support, if you're already fostering children, then we really want to encourage you to reach out to our adoption and foster care ministry here at Willow Crystal Lake. You can just text uh, FCA to 94090. And when you do, one of our team members will reach out. They'll answer any questions that you may have, and there'll be a long-standing support for you on your journey towards foster parenting. And Willow, I want to say this, your heart towards the vulnerable, it continues to shine as many of you last Sunday not only grabbed your yard sign to show your support to the community, but you also dropped off 1,600 pounds of food. 
for families in need in our community and also for our Crystal Lake Food Pantry. And so thank you so much for that. And uh, listen, if you'd still like to pick up your yard sign, you can do that. They're on display right now on the front lawn of our main campus at 100 South Main. So stop by any time to grab your sign. If you'd like one delivered to your home, you can just go to willowcrystallake.org backslash yard sign. Now, guys, listen, as we continue to mobilize tangible resources to our partners, to families in need within our community, your continued giving has been essential in fueling these acts of love in the name of Jesus. And so if you'd like to join our online community, if you'd like to give right now, just text EGIVE to 94090. You can also go to willowcrystallake.org backslash give. Now, guys, we're going to transition to our teaching for today. We're going to be hearing from our good friend, Megan Marshman. But before we do, we're going to have a very special announcement from our brand new senior pastor, Dave Dummett. So let's go ahead and join Dave now. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms joining us wherever you are. This morning is a special morning for us at Willow. You all know Megan Marshman and the way she has invested in this church family. Well, I'm thrilled to let you all know that not only is Megan here teaching today, but Megan is also officially joining the Willow Creek teaching team. She's gonna join Albert as something like an adjunct professor to Willow, where she and her family will continue to live in California. But Megan will teach throughout the year and be a part of developing our series and speak into the direction of our weekend services. Megan, we are so excited you're with us today. Welcome officially to the Willow team. Thanks, Dave. Willow, oh, I want to get closer. Willow, I am so pumped to be with you all because God is doing amazing things in this church. If you don't believe it, it's time to start believing it. God wants to move and all he needs is some willing people. So I'm honored to be a part of the team that gets to come alongside you on what God's doing in your life. I hope you're excited. And I hope you're also expectant on this Mother's Day. In fact, all you moms out there, happy Mother's Day. From my home to yours, I wish you happy Mother's Day. But we get to open God's word together, and I hope you're coming extremely expectant because God speaks through his word. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 3. Let's do it. Ephesians chapter 3. <laughs> oh, here we go. You ready? Perfect, because Paul... Praise in Ephesians chapter 3, beginning in verse 14. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family on heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Heavenly Father, I pray, and I even consider all the people watching from their homes. Lord, I pray for them right now that by your spirit, you would open them up so that you could answer Paul's prayer in them. God, would you strengthen us with power in our inner being? We need that. We don't need strength. We don't need to look like we're strong on our outside. We need your strength. So, Lord, would you do that thing in us, we pray. Amen. What a powerful prayer. What a powerful prayer specifically encouraging us towards standing strong in this shaken world. Have you noticed this world, this season is kind of nuts. <laughs> In fact, I feel like one minute I'm feeling surprising joy and then seconds later feeling just an overwhelming sadness and grief. If that's you, you're not crazy. In fact, a friend of mine looked at me recently and said, hey, emotions are not something just to be overcome. They're something to be learned from. And so whatever emotion you're coming to this message, tired, exhausted, overwhelmed, stressed, Whatever it is, I love that God wants to meet us precisely where we're at and he wants to use precisely where we're at to break us open. See, because I've realized with breaking points that either we find ourselves broken down or broken open, he'll use everything that we go through. In fact, it was a few months ago that I was teaching with you all and I was teaching specifically and God had convicted me on what to do with my anger. It was during our All the Things series. And what do I do about my anger or even my annoyance? 
And it's kind of appropriate on this Mother's Day because at times kids can, you know, bring out the best in us and sometimes the worst. What do we do with even anger and annoyance? If God wants to use everything, what is he going to do with this? And he taught me through that message to do something, to specifically, hopefully in the moment, but usually it's after, to step back and then thank God for the hard moment and then ask God, what do you want to reveal about me? And it's an easy prayer to do with your kids because in a sense, you get to say, okay, my, this, my kids can sometimes annoy and so I want to go to my heavenly father and say, what do you want to teach me about myself? And he always reveals profound truth. I mean, even we walked out of a bowling alley not too long ago and I was waiting for my little boy to look at me and say, thanks, mom, for taking time out of your busy schedule and just giving this so generously to me and giving your time, energy. Nope, instead he just said, more, and then he had a tantrum. <laughs> and I remember stepping back, this was hours later, and I said, God, oh, that was a hard moment. What do you wanna reveal about me? Because the truth is, everything I go through, anything that comes out, emotions, anything you're going through, God wants to use to break you open and reveal something about you. And in that moment, God taught me, oh, my girl, you're not content either. And, it, and I realized how it had been a while since I was even thankful. In fact, it was about a month ago, just before all the quarantine, I was angry about something else and really annoyed. I was at a vision fundraiser dinner and a woman at my table was a food hoarder. I know, and she just started grabbing food and putting it in her purse in the middle of the fundraising dinner. And she was at my table and I was trying not to be distracted and I'm having this moment, and, but trying to listen to the guy. The guy stood up to give the speech at the vision dinner fundraiser, right? And so we're all supposed to pay attention to the main event and there she is just packing anything at the table quickly into her purse. And what made me even a little more frustrated, no one could tell except for of course me, she would go to another table and she walked in front of the guy who was speaking and giving the vision Again, about to ask for money, and she walked right in front of him, distracted the whole room, and just went to go grab some bread from that table to put in her purse. And I remember, I was so frustrated. And it wasn't until an hour later I got in the car, I said, all right, God, let's get creative. <laughs> I'm gonna say it, thank you for her. What do you wanna reveal about me? And as I sat there quietly, he used even that moment, he used my anger, my frustration. He said, oh, my girl, how often I'm speaking through his word. He's constantly speaking and I, just like that woman, sit at the table and I try to get nuggets, Instagrammable quotes. I wanna grab little things while the main event is right here, friends. And we have the main event right in front of us wanting to speak truth and I don't wanna interrupt you with anything except for that. So let's jump into Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter three. Here's a little context. The first three chapters of six in the book of Ephesians, Paul's giving truth. He says, here's what's true about you, Christian. If you are in Christ, this is what's true about you. You are this, 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 this. And then he spends the last three chapters, four, five, and six saying, now live like it's true because it is. So he starts with what's true, what we can believe, and then he ends with Here's how to act. And right in the middle, I love it, because Paul prays because he understands the very thing I understand standing before you, and it's this. He can't change them. He can tell them the truth, and he can want them to make good choices, but they, he can't change them, so he prays, because he knows God can. And it's why we pray at the start of any of our messages. See, I can give you the truth, and I can want your life to be transformed, but the truth is I don't have that power. That's why we pray. And here's specifically what he prayed for. And he had a faith because he believed God could answer that prayer. He prays for this. Verse 16, I pray that out of his glorious riches that he may strengthen you with power. And then he tells him how? Through his spirit. Where? In your inner being. Why? So that Christ may dwell in your hearts. Here it is, through faith. Paul prayed for them to have faith, to be strengthened in faith. And Paul isn't the only one that wanted us to stand strong in faith. In fact, Jesus himself, when he was speaking about his imminent return, said this, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? Have you noticed in the life of Jesus, 
that he oftentimes was looking for faith. In fact, he applauded people when they showcased faith. And when he expected to see it and he didn't, he reprimanded people. Oh, you have little faith. Oh, where was your faith? So here's the big question. If Paul prayed for faith, if Jesus, when he comes back, is going to be looking for faith, it's essential for us to understand what faith is. Michelle Anthony in the book, Spiritual Parenting, went back to the root word of faith and she found three components. And this is our message today, three components of faith. First, it is a belief. Second, personal surrender, which leads to three, the corresponding conduct. In other words, the behavior, what life looks like. And it's the same breakdown of the book of Ephesians. Here's what you can believe. And then he prays, surrenders that ability so that we can behave in a way that makes sense of it. But see, the temptation and why this is so significant is because we oftentimes equate faith with just what we believe or with our good behavior. Nope, it's so much more. So where do we begin? We begin exactly where Paul does, in the prayer. We believe that God can. We don't just have a general faith. We have a faith in God, which means that we have to believe God can. This is why Paul prays to God. Faith doesn't just begin with what we do, but, but by believing God is who he says he is, and he can do what he says he can do. This is why he prayed. In fact, one chapter earlier, another reason why he prays is because he understands something about faith that we fail to, and it's this, that faith is a gift. He writes about it, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Faith is a gift. He believed God can. In fact, when he goes about why he thinks God can, he starts by saying, and it's out of God's glorious riches, he prays, that out of God's glorious riches, he knows the wealth of God. In fact, have you ever met someone kind of wealthy? Not that we, of course, want to play favorites, but do you ever notice yourself talking to them a little bit differently because you're heightenedly aware of their influence? <laughs> now think of what God is capable of. Paul believes God can answer his prayer to strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. God can. He can give you the strength you need. You don't just need to grab at a spiritual nugget or a truth moment or just a little bit of inspiration. He says, no, no, no. You need to be strengthened with power in your inner being. Why your inner being? Why does Paul pray for the inner being, not our actions? Well, simple. I'll put it this way. A water bottle. <laughs> Watch this. When shaken, what comes out of the water bottle? But watch out, this is one of the most profound illustrations. You're welcome in advance. Got on my shoes. <laughs> what came out of the water bottle? Water. If you thought water, you're thinking, good. Is it that simple? Yes, it is. Because here's the deal. Paul prays for the inner being because, do you want to know what's in your being? In your inner being is what's coming out. In fact, if you're wondering what's in your inner being, what you need to have fixed is not what's coming out. You need to have fixed what's on the inside. Paul prays for our insight. So can I ask you, and maybe one way that you can think about it is by looking at your actions. If you wanna know what's in your inner being, what's coming out these days? See, I shake the water bottle and we're talking about strength and finding strength in this kind of shifty world. What's been coming out? Have you found yourself yelling more? Or maybe just living in extreme worry? See, Paul prays for our inner being because he knows that whatever's on our inside is gonna come out whenever it's shook. If we wanna have strength in a shaken world, we need to have Paul, we need to understand why Paul prayed for our inner being because that's precisely what we need. What do we need? We need to believe that God can strengthen us with power in our inner being so that what comes out is Christ. See, Paul prayed this specific thing. See, he prays for our inner being and then immediately explains why, verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. First, 
We need to, like Paul, believe God can. Then, second part of faith, we must surrender our heart. You see, faith requires a personal surrender of whatever is in your heart, a surrender. Jesus even called us to surrender when he defined a discipleship in Mark chapter eight. He says, whoever wants to be my disciple must, ready for it, look for surrender, deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. You see, faith requires a surrender of whatever is in your heart. Why? So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Do you want spiritual strength? Believe God can and then surrender everything in your heart to let Jesus dwell there instead. Why does Paul pray for the heart? Proverbs 4, 23 specifically states it. It says, above all else, guard your heart because everything you do flows from it. Be mindful of what's on the inside because everything you do flows from it. Whatever you let on the inside comes out when you're shook. The key to faith that is oftentimes missed is surrender. Faith requires a surrender of anything that has your heart, even the good things. You see, as I was preparing this for Mother's Day, of course, heavy on my heart was my kids. And as I thought about this, I thought, okay, so we're supposed to believe God can do anything, so we need to surrender anything in our heart. And I went, you know what's in my heart? My family. And I thought, what do I do? Do I surrender these little boys over? And what does that even look like? You see, surrender is an essential component in any part of faith and in passing on faith. Whether you're a parent or maybe you're someone that just wants to have impact in this world, surrender is essential. Let's look specifically at parenting on this Mother's Day. Michelle Anthony in her book, Spiritual Parenting, says this, because we can't manufacture faith, because we don't have the power to make our kids believe, and then we don't have the power to make our kids surrender. Because we can't do that, it's no wonder parents focus instead on good behavior. While we may not be able to transform the inside, we sure can fixate on the outside behavior, and others will think our child has faith. She goes on to say, good behavior is the counterfeit to faith. Well, of course we want good behavior. Of course I want my, my boys to behave in front of you all. Of course, when they're running around the church, I want them to behave. I want them to make good choices. But it's not faith. And if when Jesus comes back, he says, I'm going to be looking for faith. And if Paul prays for faith, there must be this through line of the thing that we actually need and the thing that we need to want for others. And if this is true, that we need to believe God can and then surrender our heart this should change how we even parent or have impact on anyone. Let's look at parenting. You see, it's one thing for parents to say something like, Michelle clarifies, porn is bad, of course. And so we should put filters on our computer. By the way, that is very good and very necessary. In fact, we're gonna attach a Kara Powell's cell phone contract. You're welcome. It's one thing for a parent to focus on the behavior, but having good behavior, remember, is the counterfeit to faith. Good behavior is not faith. It's a part of it, but it comes after belief and surrender. So imagine this instead. If this is the definition of faith, and if faith is the one thing that our kids need, then imagine the scenario looking a little different, not just pointing to the actions, not just pointing to good behavior and saying, this is what you do and this is what you don't. Imagine if a dad would look at his son, and this was the conversation. Instead of, this is right, this is wrong, this is what it looks like to be a Christian, and this is what it looks like not to. What if he says this? Hey, son, we live in a sexually charged world. And every day on television and magazines, I'm tempted and sometimes I fail. Here's how I get through it. I surrender. And then he models what it looks like. How do you think his son would respond? Dad understands. I'm not alone in this. You see, without modeling faith, we end up just giving an end behavior. This is wrong and make faith solely about good and bad behavior, good and bad choices, which by the way, will lead to a bunch of kids hiding because they of course don't want to disappoint mom and dad. Without belief and surrender, the result is just good behavior, not faith. But if you want to pass on faith, whether it's to your kids or to anyone else, it begins with you. You have to believe God can. You have to surrender your heart. You have to move and ask God to move in you so that you can, point three, live like Christ.
Believe God can surrender your heart so that you can live like Christ. You see, faith is not just good behavior. It's belief and surrender, which leads to living like Christ, which is good behavior. I got to tell you, as someone standing before you, I don't want you just to see my good choices. I don't even want to just tell stories of my biggest successes. I want you to see faith in me. I want you to see what I believe, and I want you to see what's required. I want you to see the surrender so that, part three, Christ can be seen in my actions. That's why Paul prays that Christ would dwell so that whenever we're shook, Christ can appear through us. And you have to get this because otherwise we'll make our entire faith just about a bunch of good choices and bad choices. And to be honest, making a bunch of good choices and seeming perfect to our neighbors won't transform them. It's having a belief in God, praying because you trust that he can, you can't then you surrender anything that has your heart and trust him with it. And then when you find yourself shook, Christ can appear. Friends, this message, this definition of faith has changed me, specifically in every area of my life, but specifically in parenting. You see my little boy, Foster, he's four and a half and he clarifies and a half all the time. Uh, He recently, we caught him lying and it was so sad. And me and my husband looked at each other and we're like, go, you know, go hang in your room. We'll meet you there. And I was just so bummed. I really was. I was disappointed in him. Why did he choose a lie? It was a silly lie that ended up becoming this big thing. And so me and my husband kind of looked at each other and scanned each other. Who feels more spiritual in this moment? Who's ready? And he's like, I'm ready. I'm like, okay, good. And we like high five. And he goes in the room. And I just kind of sat there and listened. And I could tell whatever my husband doing, was doing, although he was remaining calm, just seemed to kind of, my, my little boy just kept ramping up. And it wasn't my husband. He was just remaining calm. But my little boy was just having more of a tantrum, more of a tantrum. It was almost like he was just ashamed of his actions. And suddenly my husband kind of like peers out the door and I'm like, my turn. You know, and so I go in and I tried everything that I normally would. I tried distraction. Like, here's your stuffed moose. Here's this. Hey, let's do this. Do you want to do this? Do you want to go play? Trying to just, just distract his mind, trying to fix the problem like a parent should, right? And I thought, this is what it looks like to pass faith on to the next generation, to my boys, to fix him, right? And I tried and it wasn't working. And I remember sitting down as he was crying, screaming, super out of control. I sat down in the room and I considered this definition of faith. And it led me to follow Paul's example and I began to pray. I prayed out loud so he could hear me. He knew I was doing something productive. I started with, oh God, thank you for my little boy. What are you trying to reveal about me? It wasn't just that I was angry or annoyed. I was just sad, and I realized God may even want to use that too. I was sad. God, what do you want to reveal about me? And in that moment, God brought to my heart how easy it is for me to lie. And I don't know why. I sometimes exaggerate stories. And I sometimes just, I've told just random lies. And to be honest with you, it's not something I'm proud of. I don't want to stand before you and go, hey, so... Uh, new pastor, I'm a liar. Of course not. What I want to stand before you and is, I don't just want to model for you good behavior. I want to model faith, which means I need to surrender some of the ways that I am naturally and in my human flesh. I try to fix my son, not lead him through faith. I try to fix myself, not come through confession. I try to do all the different things on my own. And friends, maybe you're like that in this season, just trying to control. I followed Paul's prayer and I began to pray. But before I prayed it for, before I prayed for God to change my son's behavior, I asked God to change me. And he started to bring all the reasons I tend to lie, to look important, to look impressive. He started breaking my heart for my own sin. And suddenly I looked at my little boy and I go, buddy, I lied too. That was the first thing that it got his attention. He said, what? I said, buddy, I lied too. And I don't know why I lie. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get, I don't get why I lie. I don't, I don't want to be angry. I don't want to lie. I I, I lied too, buddy. I lied too. I lied too. And suddenly my little boy went from screaming to paying attention because suddenly he saw someone that had precisely what he needed. Awareness to say, I'm not perfect, but I need something greater than myself. I lie too. You see, God didn't just transform my boy's actions. He transformed me into compassion, which looked a lot like 
Christ to my boy. And it was my compassion that drew my little boy into my presence. And friends, Christ is compassionate to you too. And he's wanting to draw you in. He's wanting to bring you close. You see the picture that I have at the end of that moment with my little boys, we're both, we're both like hugging and I'm going, do you understand why you lie? He's like, I don't get it either. I'm like, mommy does too, but we can run to God's grace. And with tears in both of our little eyes, we just held each other because we understood that we both just need more faith and we prayed for God to do it. Christian, I invite you to step from simply believing to surrendering, to open yourself up to the prayer from Paul to be strengthened with power in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. So the moment you're shook, Christ can appear appear through you. Because guess what your family needs? Guess what your neighbors need? They don't need to be impressed with you. They simply need him. Paul prayed that we may have strength in our inner being so that Christ may dwell there so that when we're shook, people can meet Jesus through us. And if you've never been deeply transformed in your inner being, The prayer continues, and the prayer that Paul prays basically goes on to say that God loves you and he's crazy about you. Talks about the width of God's love is so wide, it doesn't matter what you've done or where you've been. His love is so long, it doesn't matter where you go, he'll refuse to let you go. His love is so high, he's preparing a place for you. It's so deep that it wants to remind you how far Jesus descended in order to get you See, Jesus was equal with God. He emptied himself of his reputation and didn't just come to earth as a man. He went to the cross on your behalf. He died and took the wrath you deserve. He rose from the grave and then ascended into heaven and gave us his Holy Spirit to dwell with those who have faith, not just belief. Will you surrender your self-righteousness, your effort to try to be good enough, and maybe the control of everything in your heart? Surrender your life. Believe God can. Surrender your life and watch his Holy Spirit strengthen you in your inner being so that when you're shook, Christ can appear through you. Heavenly Father, I pray to you who can do immeasurably more than all I ask or even could imagine. Be glorified in us, we pray. And all God's children said, amen. Willow, it's so good to be with you all. I hope and pray that this prayer can become a model for us on how to ask God to do the thing in us that we need and also how we can lead others toward faith. Believing God can, surrendering our heart so that we might live like Christ. Be blessed, Willow. We'll see you next week. And Willow, may we go from here, taking the teaching from Megan, this passage from Ephesians 3, and driving it deeper in conversation and application in our small groups this week. As my wife and I will be meeting with our small group this week, our hope is that everyone is taking an hour a week where we discuss scripture, we challenge ourselves towards deeper surrender, and that we also pray for one another in the midst of this pandemic. So listen, if you're not in a small group and you'd like to jump in, just text WCL group to 94090. When you do, you'll receive some information on how you can be in a group this week, and I guarantee you it'll be a source of much-needed connection and encouragement in this season. Well, Willow, our hope is that we're all staying connected this week through social media, through our app, our website, through our e-news, and then we'll see you all back here next Sunday as we gather again and continue on in our teaching series, Standing Strong in a Shaken World. And so great to be with you again this Sunday. Thanks so much and happy Mother's Day.